Good afternoon, everybody. What is going on? I am Jeff Brent Media. In today's real user review, we're going to be taking a look at the Urban Armor Gear Standard Issue 24 Pack. Now, I was sent this bag for free, but I am in no way endorsed or sponsored by Urban Armor Gear. I am not being paid to say anything positive or negative for that matter about this pack. I did continuously see the advertisement for this bag on Facebook and Instagram, tried to find some reviews on them, couldn't find anything, so I reached out to them, saw if they wanted to do a partnership, um, and after a while they got back to me and said, yeah, we, uh, we might be uh, we're, we're willing to do that. So they sent me the pack, I have finished my testing period, and now uh, we're going to see what I think about the bag. So with the disclaimer out of the way, let's run through some of the specs of the bag now. The standard issue backpack comes in both an 18 liter version and a 24 liter version. The 18 liter version comes in at 99.95 USD and the 24 liter version comes in at 119.95 USD. The 24 liter version is what I have here and it is available in gray midnight camo, black midnight camo, or orange and midnight camo. The bag weighs 38.4 ounces or 2.4 pounds. It comes in at 22 by 13 by 8 inches. Now UAG did give me the option if I wanted the 18 liter or the 24 liter version of this bag. I have a 15 inch laptop so I went with the 24 version and I will say this laptop sleeve it's pretty big. It swallows my 15 inch computer. So it will definitely take a 16 inch and possibly larger. Now don't quote me on it, but I think maybe the 18 liter might actually accommodate a 15 inch. I can't say that for sure. Cause I don't have it. I didn't test it. So I, I, I don't know for sure, but for the amount of space that was left in this pack, I think the 18 might accommodate a larger laptop than a 13 inch. So, with that said, we're going to go ahead and get into the actual real user review. And as always, we're going to go with the negatives, neutrals, and then positives. And uh, then we're going to wrap it up with my final thoughts on the back. Now, one of my biggest negatives is actually this divider pocket right here. Now, this pocket is organized pretty well. I mean, you have two liner pockets that are pretty deep. They actually work out really well. You can fit a bunch of stuff in it. But when we get down here, we have one, two, three little divider pockets for pens, pencils, or sharpies. But we have one here and a larger one here that are just completely sewn shut. Now I don't know why they would be completely sewn shut. It kind of baffles me. Now I generally carry two sharpies. I carry a fat sharpie, I carry a fine point sharpie, I carry a pen, and I usually carry a pencil. So I generally carry four writing implements. Now um, there are actually some more pen pencil dividers in the inside of the bag, so I was able to keep the fourth one in there. But I don't understand why they would just sew these two shut for no reason. You can easily have accommodated all five, because these are actually kind of thick, and this last one's really wide. So if they just bump these over, this one on the ends, it's kind of shallow and it cuts a little short, but they could have easily sewn it over a little bit further. But even if they got rid of that one because it's shallow. There's enough room for four, if not five slots right here, which just seems like a waste of space to me. And one of my biggest pet peeves with packs is wasted space and wasted opportunity. Now it might seem small and insignificant, but it's the simple things that set not just bags, but all products apart from their competitors. And something so small and simple that they obviously didn't overlook because they actually took the time to sew it shut Something like that, it just kind of tells you that they're not really thinking forward ahead about the full final product. Now, yeah, you could easily stick pen, pencil, anything in these liner pockets or the inside dividers, but I used this as my admin panel. This is where I kept my pens. This is where I kept a notebook. This is where I kept my first aid kit because it was quick and easy to access it. But this is where I kept everything and I would have liked to have been able to keep all four of my writing implements secured right next to each other. It just would have been very, very easy for them to do that, and uh, they just kind of dropped the ball on it. And the next negative is this top pocket right here. Now it's nice, I like it, I actually utilize it for a lot of things, but this is your padded lined pocket. This would generally be where you throw your sunglasses, but this thing is big, it's deep, it's a black hole that you can't even see. It, it's so hard to see into. I mean, without making my hands, I look like Casper right now, but this pocket, it's just, it's a deep 
black hole. And it's kind of useless to throw your sunglasses in here because the pocket's so big, your sunglasses are gonna bounce around. And if you put your sunglasses in here, you're not gonna be wanting to put other things in here. Now, yeah, I can throw like my cell phone in there, but still, that's a, you can't even see. And I'm looking with my bare eyes with the lights and you can't, it's hard to see. There's a cell phone in there. I'll light the cell phone up so you can tell. Like you can't even, you can't, you can't even see. It's a deep pocket. So this pocket could be a little bit smaller and tighter to accommodate things like your sunglasses because that's what you would generally put in these lined, felt lined pockets. The next negative is right here and it's this front pocket. I found it kind of useless. I didn't really put anything in here. Um, it's it's kind of tight, it's very narrow. It's got that like frame sheet or something to it that makes the construction kind of rigid, which helps the bag stand on its own because the entire bag, the front, this bottom panel, the bottom, it has this like sheet in it that makes it stand, which is great, but it also makes this pocket very slim. Now here's a standard size notebook and it doesn't, it's a fight and it doesn't fit all the way. And that's, I mean, it's by no means a thick notebook. Yeah, I got some papers crammed into it because I use it, but it doesn't actually fit in there. And I don't generally keep my cell phone in my backpack. I personally keep my phone in my pocket all the time, but that would really be one of the only things I can keep in there. Maybe a tiny notebook or something like that, but I found this pocket to be useless. I didn't use it at all. Now the next and probably biggest negative about this bag is the back of the bag. Now, yes, it is channeled, so it did vent fairly well. I did wear this in some pretty warm days, but the bag, right now it's empty, so it does seem to have some good flex to it, but once you load this thing up, this felt extremely rigid on my body. Dare I say, like I had a two by four on my back. It did not flex very well, and it was kind of uncomfortable to wear, especially in the heat. And the shoulder straps, they're thick. They are very thick, and they feel like they've got some decent padding in them, which they do, but they were so thick, like it's broken in a little bit now. But man, when I first put this thing on and wore it, and I had it on for a while, it was very, very stiff and pretty uncomfortable. Now I did EDC this bag for a couple of days, but then the weekend rolled around and we took the uh, the tot to an amusement park that's uh, mostly kid oriented. So I did actually spend most of the day with this bag on my back because uh, spinny rides and me, we don't get along. So my wife went on the rides with the kid and I mostly stood in line. And yes, I've been using this for a couple weeks. So the straps did break in, but these straps, they didn't give me a good bend over the shoulder at first and the back it was just so incredibly rigid it was uncomfortable to wear now i did keep it on because i was testing out the bag and i kept hoping that it would just eventually break in and it did break in a little bit with you so it's definitely got some more flex and give to it now but i still think this is a very stiff pack again it's empty so it feels like it's it looks and like it's gonna have some flop to it now but once you put some stuff in this bag, especially if you put a laptop in the back side of it, it's going to make the back of this bag very rigid. I did not bring my laptop to the amusement park, but it was an amusement park slash water park, so I did have some clothes, some bathing suits. Um, the towels were in the, the wagon with the daughter, so I didn't have the towels in here, but I was pretty loaded up with all of the other necessities that we needed, and um, the bag was not comfortable to wear. Not, not all day long. And uh, I have talked to some other people that have the 18 liter version and they said it was just fine. So I'm thinking maybe the 18 liter is just gonna be a little shorter and it's gonna be a little bit better because when I had this on, it definitely rode a little bit lower on my body than I normally used to or normally like with a pack. Yes, I could cinch up the straps now and bring it up just a little bit. It's very stiff and it's riding very high on my neck. So it's either gonna ride high on my neck or low on my back. So it was six of one, half dozen of the other, which way did I wanna be more uncomfortable? And I chose to have it ride low. And I think maybe the 18 liter would have just brought that overall length in a little bit better and it would have felt a little bit more comfortable to wear. And again, it did break in a little bit, but it is still quite stiff. And really those are it. There is one neutral point that I'm gonna talk about right now. 
that at first it was a negative, but I'm putting in the neutral category and I'll tell you why. So let's get into that right now. And that is the opening of this bag. Now this is listed as a clamshell bag and this is not a clamshell bag. Even though the zipper comes almost to the bottom, it has these a bit of accordion pleats here that keep it from opening all the way. So this would be a half zip bag. Now, I did not know this was a half zip bag. I thought it was a clamshell based on what I read on their website. So I was a little bit disappointed when it came in like this. Generally, this would have fallen into the negative category for me, but the reason it's there is it will stand up on its own. Even fully loaded, this bag stands up on its own. Even with some stuff in the front pocket, pulling it forward, the bag stands up on its own. The bag is actually balanced really, really, really well. Like, I'm very surprised at how well balanced this bag is. But I was expecting this to be a full clamshell bag. Now this did come in very useful at the water park when I was hanging the bag up to get changed, take my clothes off and get my bathing suit out and put everything back inside the bag here without everything falling out. Now, if this was a true clamshell, yes, I could have just half zipped it, but depending upon the zippers that are on the bag, it could have, especially if it had a big pocket up front like this, has a very large front pocket, the weight of that could have just pulled it forward and unzipped the bag, everything would have fallen onto the floor. But because it has these accordion pleats here, it actually helped me to get changed. So I hated the fact at first, and you can watch my unboxing, that it had these pleats on it, but um, I'm kind of indifferent to it now because it did actually work out for me. And again, it does help the bag stand up on its own. Now, another neutral point is this bag is kind of set up for a water bladder, but not really. It has these little loops here that are generally put there so you can tuck the straw for your water bladder through and you can have it next to your face so it's not bouncing around. You can just grab it and stick it in your mouth. And yes, there is a pocket on the back where you can easily dump a water bladder, but there is no hanger. So if you don't have any type of water bladder that's rigid, it's just going to slump down to the bottom. In addition, there's no place to toss a port through. There's no, there's no opening, there's no sleeve, which you can easily accommodate by just simply leaving a gap in your zippers. And they're aqua guards, so they do have a little bit of retention to them, so they're not probably not gonna come unzipped on you, but these are aqua guard zippers. So you put aqua guard zippers on your bag, and then you leave a hole gapped to take your straw for your hydration bladder, it defeats the purpose of having aqua guard zippers. So if this was going to be a true multi-purpose bag, just putting a little piece up here that you can, a little piece of webbing or a dongle so you can hang a water bladder from and just pass through port either right in the middle so it comes out and you can choose left or right side because people like to choose that on their own if that's applicable or just having something like right in the top or in the top sleeve up here to pass out a tube, that would be great. Now the biggest positive of this bag is actually the zippers. They are not branded, it doesn't tell me if they're YKK or not, but you can see there's two bends in this pocket, they actually zip really, really well. And all of them do that. All of the zippers actually work and zip really, really well. Even this little guy is an AquaGuard zipper in there. It's really hard to see him, but that's even an AquaGuard zipper. But all of the zippers, if you don't get it caught on the zipper pull, actually work really, really well, which for potentially off-brand, because the zippers, they're very tiny pulls, there's no branding on them and it's not stated. So I would think if they were YKK, they would be uh, branded or at least said on the website, but they all work really, really well. And I've always had bad luck with AquaGuard zippers. Even some YKK ones tend to stick, especially with bends. And almost every pocket that has a zipper, except for the little tiny useless front pocket and the laptop sleeve, they're, they all have bends. These are the only two straight zippers and they all work really, really well. So that was actually quite impressive because I thought that uh, I was definitely gonna have hangups on them and I didn't. I didn't have any hangups with the zippers at all. They all worked out really, really well for me. Now on the other things, and I'm a water bottle pocket guy, I prefer my packs to have them. You'll notice there are none on this bag, but this other pocket, 
we have a mesh pocket and the liner pocket. And you can take something like a 750 Camelback chute. Now this does have the little handle, so this is a little bit bulkier just because the top part, but it does fully zip and close. And then you can take something a little bit narrower if you don't want to have that big handle. You could take dropping stuff, a smaller bottle, and then that'll also fit. That actually fits in there a lot better because I don't think that's quite as large. This is 750, I don't know the capacity on that. That's just a, a cheap Walmart one that um, I just, I liked the red bottle, so I grabbed it and bought it. Um, but they fit really, really well. So you can actually just throw your water bottle in here. Now, it's just a little piece of nylon divider between the inside of the bag and the outside, but your laptop's not on the inside. Your laptop's gonna be in the back. So you're a little bit better off because I personally don't ever like to mix liquids with electronics. So when, that's one of the reasons I really like external water bottle pockets is my water bottles on the outside of the bag. So if God forbid this thing leaks, it's not gonna ruin my computer, my hard drives, my tech, anything like that that's inside the bag. So I generally like them on the outside, but this is actually, it's okay. I can deal with that. That's, there's still a little bit of a difference there, a little bit of a, a liner because the laptop's gonna be in the backside not directly in there. Now this will take up a little bit of the room on the inside of the bag. These pockets do have a little bit of their own dimension to them, not too, too much. So depending upon what size water bottle you put in here, you may be eating up more of the inside space of the bag. But the pack is pretty big on the inside. It said 24 liters, but it actually can swallow quite a bit of stuff. So I think you'll be okay. And honestly, that's about it for the positives of this bag. It did work. I used it for a couple of weeks. I used it as an EDC. I used it as a family day pack and it carried everything I asked it to carry. It was not the most comfortable bag to carry. And with this bag, I think the negatives and neutral points definitely outweighed the positives of the bag for me. Uh, again, I've talked to some other people with the pack, 18 liter version. They said it fit them fine. It was very comfortable. So I think my issue might've been that the pack is just too tall to fit me comfortably. So it was either gonna rub my the lower part of my back or rub on my neck. So I think if you're maybe six foot or over, this pack might fit you a little bit better. For point of reference, I'm 5'9", and I think I have a little bit longer torso than average for a person 5'9". So I think the 18 liter version might've fit my body type better, but I went 24 because they said the uh, 18 liter would only fit a 13 inch laptop. I have a 15, so I went with a bigger size bag specifically to fit my laptop. So overall, for $120 USD, I would pass on this bag. Now, there are other options out there that are similar size, similar specs that I think were a lot more comfortable and a lot more utilitarian for that same price range. You can definitely pick up a few used bags that are really, really good bags and that 125 range that would definitely fit the same niche as this bag. So ultimately I would pass. Um, if you're on the fence with it and you're 5'9 and you do think you might wanna try one, I'd say try the 18 liter version. Maybe try to find one used on eBay. I mean, it's not a terrible pack. I've definitely used worse bags than this. Um, and I don't wanna say it's a bad bag. It just didn't work for me. It might work for you, but I wouldn't buy it again. Um, I would say if you can get one for a really good deal, if you're still unsure and you see one online, check like maybe eBay or the other, plenty of other sites out there, the auction sites. And if you could find one for a good deal, I'd say snag one. If it was like $75 range, that would be a good, good sweet spot for this pack. Uh, maybe the 18 liter 75 and the 20 liter $100 range. I think that would be a better price point for the bag. But, um, Again, it's not the worst bag I ever used, but it's definitely not the best. So for me, I would definitely take a pass on the uh, UAG 24 liter standard issue pack. Um, yeah, that, that's really it. I, I, was, I, wasn't, uh, I wasn't impressed with the pack. So if you like this video and any of my other videos, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. Smash that big red button and ring that bell right next to it so you get notifications the next time I post a brand new video. Good night.